Hey ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Jackson here, Alfalfa and Ford Specialist with Cropland by Winfield United. Wanted to bring to you a segment today about sugarcane aphids. So if you're raising Ford sorghum or grain sorghum, sorghum sedan grasses, primarily I would say south of I-70, you probably have some experience with sugarcane aphids. So I wanted to take a few minutes and visit about those. As we know, they are very damaging to a sorghum crop. And basically we have these small aphids out there. They're going to be sucking sap and sugars from these sorghum plants, primarily found on the bottom side of the leaves of these plants. The other thing about it is these are female. They are all female aphids and they give birth to live young. So they don't lay eggs, they give birth to live young these adults are going to last up to about four weeks. As these live young continue to grow, turn into adults, reproduce, we have colonies that get built. And pretty soon these colonies get overcrowded on the bottom sides of these leaves, which times we often see. As you're walking by, you might see some honeydew glistening on the top of some leaves and you wonder what's going on. And then you pick the leaf up and you see a big colony of sugarcane aphids on the bottom side. Once these colonies get too crowded, basically the adults grow wings. They kind of flutter up into the wind. They spread by the wind moving them around. So we want to be very conscious of how we uh, look at these things. They're primarily going to overwinter in the deep south. Every year there's a reinfestation that comes north from the south. You have to consider that this year we don't know what the population is going to look like for sure, but we do know that there is an increased number of planned grain sorghum acres in the southern U.S., which would also lead to a better host environment for sugarcane aphids in the forage sorghum and sorghum sedan world. So we want to be conscious of that. So they're going to have little dark antenna tips. They're going to have a clear, not a dark head. It's going to be a clear head. They're going to have little tips on their feet that are dark, and they're going to have these little coruncles are little tailpipes that are dark colored as well. So from an identification standpoint, that's one way we can identify them. Well, for those of you that have never seen severe sugarcane aphid issues before, I've got so many aphids here on these few plants that the honeybees are in here getting the honeydew off of the aphids that are on the bottom sides of the leaves. So, yep. I'd say we'll go to leaf number two. Yeah, so here we are, Plattsburgh, Missouri, which is 25 minutes north of Kansas City. So, yeah, lots of aphids. Yeah, they're so thick in here. Well, we've got natural predators in here too. Ladybugs are doing their job, but the aphids are so bad on these plants right now. We have such a heavy infestation that the bees are in here like crazy. Kind of creeps me out a little bit, but I thought you'd be interested to see that just a little. A non-aphid tolerant product, by the way. So there are multiple ways of controlling the sugarcane aphid. One way would be is to go apply insecticide in crop to spray and kill the insect, which generally is not just sugarcane aphid specific. There are also some parasitic wasps and some other beneficials that might help in the control of sugarcane aphids in crop. One of the things that I want to talk to you about today would be your selection in seed. So most of us, if we're going to go out there and do an application, your custom application on these things is going to cost you four to six dollars just to get a machine out in the field. Then you're going to have the cost of your insecticide which would either be Transform or Savanto. So most of us, you know, this guy right here does a lot of good for a lot of people. It's also not the most friendly for other beneficial insects. Most of us are going out there to do that. We also have another option, and that would be seed selection. So with five bucks an acre, basically by selecting a different seed variety than you have today, you can have some control of sugarcane aphids out there in that field. So we want to be able to take this guy out and do a little swathing and maybe get two cuts. Or some of you want to take this guy out and do some chopping, but if we get too much honeydew on there, first of all, we can kill the plant or uh, severely damage it due to slowing down photosynthesis. You get honeydew that falls from the top leaf down on top of this leaf, and then over time that gets moldy, turns black, shuts down photosynthesis, damages the plant. Very, very sticky as well. That honeydew is very sticky. So when it comes to your running your swather through there, or maybe running your chopper through there. Guys that have tried to chop 
sticky, sticky sorghum because of the honeydew know that it takes a lot of time to clean those spouts out. So we have options today in seed selection. And there are basically three different ways that a, a plant can be tolerant. There's not a resistance, but we're gonna talk about tolerance to uh, sugarcane aphids. The first thing would be antibiosis. And that's basically the, the host plant having an adverse effect on the aphid, which includes overall reproduction or just the aphid growth and the survivability of the aphids. So basically, that plant affects how that aphid goes through reproduction or how healthy it is, kind of messes them up a little bit, and they don't survive really well. So that's one way that we can control sugarcane aphids with antibiosis. The second form would be antizenosis. And that's also known as like a, a non-preference. And simply, the sugarcane aphid does not like the host, whether it's a morphological piece about the way that plant's designed and or some chemical factor that the plant produces that that sugarcane aphid does not like so it doesn't go there. It's going to either mess up the physiology of the sugarcane aphid or we have just host preference where they don't like to be in that situation. Third thing would be sugarcane aphid tolerance. So you're going to see a pretty good population in a plant that's basically tolerant but the effect of the aphid does not destroy that plant's integrity like a non-tolerant plant so you can see it tolerates the feeding it doesn't have the same stress on the plant so the, the plant basically survives better now you also have opportunities where you can take two of those and put together or all three and the breeders are trying to do as good as they can right now to try to get all three tolerances in different plants so think about that ladies and gentlemen for about five dollars an acre you could select a variety that is sugarcane aphid tolerant to go out there and protect those acres now that number right there to me is basically on a sorghum sedan type hybrid where we're going to have about a ten dollar a bag you plant 25 pounds of the acre you have about a five dollar an acre expense or i call it risk management tool so that you can protect that plant and take a really good first cutting and go out there and get a really good second cutting so a couple things to think about if you're considering a forage sorghum which it might take you know if it's ten dollars a bag and you can plant five pounds of the acre now you're getting ten acres out of that bag so it's 50 cents an acre if that's the case to protect with a sugarcane aphid tolerant forage sorghum single cut material so I just want you guys to think about a few things like that is that we do have some really, really good varieties in the industry today that are sugarcane aphid tolerant. Whether it's antibiosis, antizenosis, just a straight out tolerance to those aphids or a combination of two or three of those together. The Cropland brand, we have multiple varieties as well. Uh, one of the, the ones that we're really happy about would be a Brachitic Dwarf BMR Sorghum Sedan. Has all the benefits of being a Brachitic Dwarf Sorghum Sedan. Oh, and by the way, it's sugarcane aphid tolerant. We call that Guardian AT. So Guardian, take care of the plant. AT, aphid tolerance. And that's specific to the sugarcane aphids. Brachitic Dwarf BMR for Sorghum Sedan, sugarcane aphid tolerant. So next to it is a non-tolerant variety. And I just want you to notice all the honeydew. You got the dead carcasses. We have sugarcane aphids up in the canopy. A lot of honeydew looking pretty tough. So we're gonna go from those leaves right across the row and you can see clean. Nothing, honeydew non-existent, a little anthracnose in here, a little leaf disease, but we've had an extremely high amount of rain and moisture in this environment. So again, I just wanna show you side by side, row to row, susceptible versus sugarcane aphid tolerant. Look at that, beautiful clean leaves. Brachitic Dwarf BMR Sorghum Sedan Multi-Cut. And this has been out here for like 100 days. So these plants are tired, they're wore out. But again, just look at the tolerances we have. They do not want to be over on the other product. Aphids. We also have a conventional sorghum sedan, kind of on the economy line, that we call Honey Sweet AT. So Honey Sweet AT for aphid tolerant. In the forage sorghum lineup, we have a product that we call 3681, 
AT. It's going to be about a 107 day conventional product, very good sugarcane aphid tolerance. The fourth thing that I want to bring up is that there are also these pearl millets out there. So pearl millets are not a host to sugarcane aphids. So that's a great benefit to using a pearl millet variety to have excellent, excellent production in those areas where you might have sugarcane aphids present. So just a few things to think about today, sugarcane aphid tolerance in the south, south of I-70 in the U.S. is generally where we see problems start to flare up. I'm, I'm right here by Kansas City and I've had them in the last three years in a row. We don't know what they'll be like this year for sure. They might be a little bit later than normal, but for a very, very small investment, you could take care of some sugarcane aphids in your crop, have the protection and the peace of mind that you've, you've taken care of some things and you should be off to good shape. That's not to say that they couldn't get so heavy at times that we would not still have to make a chemical application, but it probably would not warrant two applications like some folks would have to do as we go farther south. So Jeff Jackson here, just wanted to give you a few tidbits about sugarcane aphid tolerance today for those guys that have had them in the past, what can we do about them? And that you do have some very economical ways to control sugarcane aphids out there versus running a machine. You can do it for basically the same cost as getting the machine in the field and you haven't had to pay for the chemistry which is not so specific to sugarcane aphids. So again, Jeff Jackson, have a great day. Crapland by Winfield United Alfalfa and Ford Specialists. Have a good one.